Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis by mailing a donation to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. And I want to thank Eddie for supporting the program that way. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month at patreon.greatdetectives.net. And I want to thank Guy for becoming our latest Patreon supporter at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Well, now let's go ahead and get into this week's episode of Dangerous Assignment. The original air date, April 10th, 1950, and the title is Recover... Underwater Demolition Secrets. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Hi, Commissioner. Steve, have a seat. Thanks. I suppose you know you're ruining my reputation around this town. Every time I get out on a date, you haul me back here to the office and send me halfway around the world. (laughs) Cheer up, Steve. They always keep a light burning in the window for you, don't they? Yeah, but if you're gone too long, that fire can die out, you know. (laughs) Steve, ever have on a diving suit? Diving suit? Well, yeah, once. You're leaving for the Caribbean on the next plane. Your destination is Trinidad. I'm going to fly to Trinidad in a diving suit? You're going hunting for pirate treasure, Steve. There's no Mm -hmm. time now to go into the background. Go to Trinidad and show up in dungarees at the Trade Winds Bar. Mm -hmm. You'll be contacted there, and the contact will fill you in on the deal. Just a minute. Part of the deal doesn't by any chance involve getting into a diving suit, does it? It might. Steve, this is a vital job. We're depending on you right down the line. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. In a moment, tonight's story of Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. But first, a message from the Ford dealers of America. The 1950 Ford has everyone talking. Here is what Mr. R.L. Bell of Georgia, one of more than 410,000 enthusiastic owners, said about his 50 Ford. I've had my new Ford Club Coupe for six weeks and have driven it 6,700 miles. This operation was over all types of roads and under varying weather conditions, from Key West to the Great Smokies. It holds the road better than any car I've ever driven. And in 19 years of traveling, I've owned eight makes of cars. For my money, it has more comfort than any low-priced car on the market. My car is equipped with overdrive, and up to now, my gasoline mileage average has been 21 and 3 tenths miles per gallon. Yes, Ford owners everywhere are finding out about the economy of the great new Ford. They're saving real money now because of Ford's low price. And they'll be saving real money for years to come because of Ford's low operating and maintenance cost. But see for yourself. Tomorrow, stop by your neighborhood Ford dealers. Get the facts on Ford economy. Then take the wheel and test drive the big new Ford. Well... This assignment tops them all. Usually, I have at least an inkling of what I'm supposed to do, but here I am heading for Trinidad, and all I know is I'm supposed to meet a guy in the Trade Winds Bar. It's a hot Tuesday afternoon when I get to Trinidad. I change into dungarees at the hotel and head for the Trade Winds Bar. It's a real keen joint. A bunch of rickety tables, a calypso singer, a battered-looking bar with a drunk sprawled on it, and behind the bar, a fat gent in a dirty apron. All right, name it, brother. Beer. 
Coming up. Hey, sailor, aren't you? Uh, yeah, but out of a job right now. Just drifting. Yeah. Uh, he, uh... Hey, but Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hey, mister. Huh? Buy me a drink, will you? You look like you've had too much already. You better go back to... Hey, wait a minute. Joe Wilkins? Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Commissioner told me I'd be contacted here, but he didn't mention you. I've been working on this case for six months now. Oh. I've managed to establish an enviable reputation as the leading drunk in Trinidad. Oh, my poor liver. What's the deal? Underwater demolition. You know what a job it did for us during the war, Steve? Yeah, the Navy frogmen. Yeah. Well, about six months ago, a group of civilians with government cooperation developed a revolutionary new explosive technique. Mm-hmm. They came down here, rented a boat, and made their tests. We're sure of that much because they radioed in that they were on their way back. And that's the last we ever heard from them. What happened? We don't know. The boat apparently sank. Hmm. Any survivors? One. That can named Griggs. He disappeared before I could get down here. It's either one of two things, Steve. Griggs got away with the data they compiled, or else it's at the bottom of the Caribbean. You know... If that falls into the wrong hands, none of our ports and harbors would be safe. You got any line on Griggs? Not until three days ago. And Griggs popped up here in Trinidad looking real prosperous, throwing dough around. Well, maybe he sold the plan. I don't think so, Steve. He started outfitting a treasure hunting expedition. His outfit is shoving off tomorrow on a little boat called the Sea Witch. I've been trying to get a job on it. Hey, you could be walking into a lot of trouble. Steve, Hmm. see that babe over there in the corner? Corner table alone. Yeah. What about her? That's Griggs' girlfriend. I can't get any information from her. I, uh, I think she likes the more of your size. <laughs> okay. I'll give it a try. See you later. Hi. What do you want? To buy you a drink. Hmm. Why not? Matter of fact, I'll buy you two drinks. And then what? <laughs> then we quit drinking. I'll be broke. Oh? <laughs> Having it tough, huh? Yeah. It's pretty hard for a diver to get a job these days. A diver? Oh, why don't you get lost? What's the matter? Don't you like divers? Oh, sure, but they're never around. I know. I go with a guy who is a diver. Griggs. Oh. Hey, maybe this friend of yours, Griggs, could get me a job. I don't think so. It's some kind of a treasure hunting business. Teresa, button your lip. Hello, Griggs. Who's this joker? A guy who is kind enough to buy me a drink. Shove off, bud. Now, don't you think that's up to Teresa? You heard me get lost. Oh, sit down, Griggs, and quit showing your muscles. And, mister, maybe you'd better sort of... Okay, okay, sure. Well, see you around. Maybe we can have that drink some other time. Yeah? There won't be any other time. You keep your eyes to yourself after this and don't get any... How did you make out, Steve? Not so hot. The boyfriend showed up too soon. Yeah. Well, I sure wish we could get some. What's the matter? A little gent who just came in, the one in the white suit. Yeah, what about him? His name is Jeremiah. You'll hear all about him in a second. Mm -hmm. Byron's tuning up right now. Lord Byron? Yeah, that's the Calypso singer over there. Listen. Jeremiah is a fine man, he, the best man in all Trinidad colony. He's a good friend of sailors whose luck's very bad, the best man in colony Trinidad. Our oh, wrist watch a ring or a curio, for this Jeremiah will lend much dough. He will find you a job for a modest fee, the savior of suffering humanity. Saves the sailors from a cold, cruel fate and charges a very low internet rate. Oh, Jeremiah is a fine man, he, the best man in Trinidad colony. <laughs> and now you know who Jeremiah is. Yeah. Hey, he just slipped that Calypso singer some dough. Sure, that's the deal. Hmm. Well, what do you know? Singing commercials in Trinidad yet. Wait a minute. That song said something about getting jobs for sailors. Sure, that's right. That's the angle I'm working on with him. You mean you're trying to get him to put you aboard the boat Griggs is sailing on? Yeah. Oh, watch it, Steve. Jeremiah's heading this way. Right. Oh, Joe. Huh? Joe. Oh, well, hello, Jeremiah. How can I help you start a new life if you spend all the money I'd lend you on cheap whiskey? Oh, I'd try, Jeremiah. 
You know how it is. You must be firm, Joe. You must turn over a new leaf. No. The ways of sin lead but to the grave of a drunk tank. And then how could I ever get back all the money I've invested in you? Work. That is the answer for you, Joe. Work. Yeah. Nobody will give me a job. Ah, that's not true any longer, Joe. I have gotten you a job. Huh? On the Sea Witch. You sail tomorrow morning. Hey, are you kidding me? Of course not. Joe, I see in you a noble man who has been corrupted by evil companions and unfortunate experiences. I believe in you, Joe. I believe that you will straighten out and take your rightful place in the world. So, I have gotten you a job to help you. That's, that's pretty nice of you, Jeremiah. It was not easy, mind you. It is a small boat with a small crew, some sort of treasure hunting expedition, I believe. Uh, now, just sign this little slip of paper, if you will, please. What is it? Well, the customary agreement, which gives me a small percentage of your wages in return for the trouble I've gone to on your account. Hey, you call 20% small? Why, Joe, after all I've done for you, how can you quibble about such a trifling amount? Um, oh, okay, Jeremiah, I'll send it. Uh, just give the skipper this card, Joe. That will identify you. Okay. Well, I must be going now. I have to meet this other deckhand, Nick, and give him a card also. Thanks again, Jeremiah. When a human being is in need, Jeremiah will not be far away. Steve? Yeah, I heard it all. Come on. Huh? We're going to follow Jeremiah. I'm cooking up an idea. If it works, you're going to have yourself a shipmate. We follow Jeremiah to his office near the waterfront. We wait down the street. Pretty soon, the sailor goes into the office. He's walking like he had quite a few drinks under his belt. In a few minutes, he comes out again, and he's putting one of Jeremiah's cards in his pocket. Come on, Joe. Here he comes. Start walking. Hey. Sorry. Why don't you look out where you're going? Same to you, bud. Oh, no, oh, look, now, you... break it up. It was just an accident. Hey, didn't you just come out of Jeremiah's office? Yeah, what's it to you? Oh, I was just wondering if he was there. I got to find out some more stuff from him about this boat I'm shoving off on tomorrow morning. Oh, the Sea Witch? Yeah, why? Uh, looks like we're going to be shipmates. Uh -huh. Are you sailing on it too, huh? Yeah. My name's John. Oh, Nick's mine. Oh, this is Steve, buddy of mine. Hi. Hi, Steve. Hey, this calls for a drink, huh? Yeah, I could use one. How about you, Nick? <laughs> sure, I can always use one. And this is our last day ashore, too. Come on, let's go. Five bars later, Joe and I managed to find out that Nick hasn't ever seen the skipper of the Sea Witch. Finally, Nick figures he's had too much. I, uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get out, get out of here. Sure, Nick, sure. Here, give me a hand, Joe. Okay. Oh, easy, Nick. I need, I need, I need some, some fresh air. Yeah, yeah, that's where we're going, fresh outside. Mm. Mm. There you are. Mm. Feel better now? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Fresh eggs. It's wonderful. Why? Uh, mm -mm. Catch him, Joe. I got him. Well, now what? Huh? Steve will have to take him to the police station, I guess. Yeah. It's right next door, too. Quite a coincidence, huh? Come on. I'll carry him. Okay. Brother. He's no lightweight. Here we are. Yeah, Steve, set him down on that chair over there. Yeah. Hello. What's all this? We've got a package for you. He's it. Drunk? Slightly. My name's Mitchell, Constable. Steve Mitchell. Here are my credentials. I say, what can I do for you, child? You got a nice private cell where you could deposit this guy, Nick? Well, I suppose so. Ordinarily, we'd throw him into the drunk tank. Well, this isn't an ordinary occasion. I'll fill you in on it after you lock him up. I get Jeremiah's card off Nick. Then I make a deal with the constable. He puts Nick in a private cell and me in the drunk tank. And from now on, he's to call me Nick. Joe sends a message to the skipper that Nick is locked up. Then I roost there the rest of the night, watching a few assorted cases of DTs. Morning finally comes, and with it comes a visitor. All right, now. Look alive, chums. Which one of you is Nick? I am. On your feet, then. Here's someone to pick you up. Who are you? The skipper. We'll see your card. Here it is. Come on. Good moving, Nick. Okay, okay, let's go.
And if I wasn't short-handed, I'd let you rot in a drunk tank. Ah, simmer down, will you? We shove off in an hour. Be aboard. Sure, sure. I'll get my gear together and be down there in plenty of time. I'll see you later, Skipper. I start down the street in one direction. The Skipper goes in another. I wait until I'm out of his sight. Then I double back and head for Joe's rooming house. I turn a corner just in time to see the Skipper going inside. But the Skipper isn't even supposed to know Joe, let alone where he lives. That means just one thing. There's been a leak. I shift into high, but just as I get to the door... I head for the rickety stairs, but a door opens above and Joe staggers out into the hall. Joe! Here, let me... No. It's too late, Steve. The skipper? Yeah. He he doesn't know about you, Steve. I, I told him I was working alone. Get aboard the Sea Witch, Steve. You're on your own. In a moment, you'll hear the second act of Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy, after this brief word from the Ford dealers of America. All over the country, folks are praising the beautiful new Ford, and no wonder... But this car is a masterpiece of sleek fashion styling. But there's more than style in the new Ford, much more. There's safety, too. Safety that's built into Ford features. Into its dependable Magic Action king-size brakes, for example. Into its sturdy all-steel lifeguard body. And into its advanced steering mechanism. And the new Ford brings you economy, too. It's low in first cost and high in resale value. It's thrifty on gas and oil. And inexpensive to maintain. So before you buy any car at any price, stop by your neighborhood Ford dealers. Look over the new Ford for beauty. Check its many safety features. Get the facts about Ford economy. Then discover the flashing performance and big car comfort of this truly great car. Test drive the 100 horsepower V8 or its companion in quality, the 95 horsepower 6. See, hear, and feel why the big new Ford is the one fine car in the low price field. And now, here is the second act of Dangerous Assignment. Yeah, I'm really on my own now. Joe's dead. I know the skipper killed him, but I can't tip my hand yet. I have to play it close to the chest. So I go down to the waterfront and get aboard the sea witch. Get forward and help Griggs with the lines. We're ready to shove off and we're short-handed. Some rum dum named Joe didn't show up. Okay. Hey, just a minute. What's the matter, Griggs? You're the guy who was making a play for my girl at the Trade Winds Bar yesterday. So what? So what are you doing aboard? Same as you, Buster. I'm sailing on this tub. What? Look, Skipper, get this guy off. You look. I'm the skipper. I run this boat. Yeah. Well, don't forget I'm the only guy who knows where to take this boat. Griggs, you're getting paid for this job, same as I. <laughs> the boss says this guy goes. Now shut up. Sorry, Griggs. Okay. Okay. But just remember, I don't like you. That's tough. Yeah, it could be. Now break it off, both of you. Get busy with those lines. Hey, you, Lord Barn. Yes, Skipper? Hey, that Calypso singer going along, too? Yeah, he's a pretty good dickhead. Now, get that engine started. We're shoving off. I watch the shoreline of Trinidad fade away, and I wonder if I'll ever see it again. Joe and I had figured we'd be two against three when the showdown came, but now it looks like it's one against three. I can't figure out where Lord Byron, the Calypso singer, stands in the deal, so the third day out I'm on deck when I hear him singing. Oh, the sea which you sail on the Carib Sea, the hunt buried treasure for you and me. If we don't find the treasure, then the hunt is done. Lord Byron don't care, cause he still have fun. <laughs> you sound like you don't care whether we find this treasure or not. Oh, many people seek treasure, Nick. Few of them ever find it. But it's fun looking. Mm. Hey, did you ever sail with Griggs or the skipper before? No. You know, I have a theory that you can trust a happy man. Well, you and me, Nick, we are happy people, but the Skipper and Griggs, they're not. It's too bad. Yeah. Look, uh, 
If you ever hear the skipper and Griggs talking about me, I'd like you to come and tell me right away. Oh, sure, Nick. I'll come and tell you right away if I hear anything. Good. Okay, Nick. This is it. Hi. You're going to work. What do you mean, skipper? Get into a diving suit. What? You heard me. I want you to go down and see if we're over that sunken ship. What's the matter with Griggs? I thought he was a diver. He's got a belly ache. Oh. Kind of hit him all of a sudden, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Look, I was told you were a diver, too. Well, sure. Sure I am. Then get into the suit. Lord Byron will tend your lines and man the pump. Get moving. I don't like it. It smells like trouble all of a sudden, but there's nothing I can do. I get into the diving suit. They fasten the helmet over my head, and Lord Byron helps me over the side. On the bottom, it's cold and murky and quiet. I poke around for about 15 minutes, but I can't see the sunken ship anywhere. Lord Byron, you better hold me up. Lord Byron. He's busy, Nick. I'm handling your lines now. Oh, well, uh, Skipper, I can't spot that hulk anywhere. Mm. Can't be far. Well, it isn't here. How about holding me up? You're getting enough air, Nick? Yeah, but keep it coming, huh? Sure, Nick. Sure. I'll haul you up now, but I want you to keep your suit on. We'll move on a couple of hundred yards, and you and Griggs will go down again. Griggs? I thought he was sick. He feels okay all of a sudden. Okay. Look, uh, come on, haul me up. We're getting lonesome down here. Sure, Nick. Sure. I'm sweating plenty inside that suit on the way to the surface. For a couple of grim seconds when the skipper was asking me about my air supply, I figured he was onto me and playing cat and mouse. Yeah, it was good to get that fishbowl off of my head. Yeah, I thought I was in trouble then, but if I could have seen what was happening at the Trinidad jail, I'd have known how much trouble I really was in. Good morning, Constable. Oh, Jeremiah. Down here to save a few souls this morning? I am making my usual visit to offer my services to any unfortunate sailors who may have fallen in with evil companions, yes. Well, the crop we've got in the tank this morning don't seem to have much of value on them. My good man, you do not seem to realize that pawning articles is but a minor thing with me. My larger aim is to serve humanity. Of course, of course. Clumsy of me to forget, Jeremiah. Well, you know where the drunk tank is. Help yourself. Thank you. Jeremiah. What? Who called me? Jeremiah. Over here. Why, Nick. Nick, you're supposed to be out on the sea witch. Uh, two guys got me drunk and hauled me in here. Who were they? One of them's name was Joe. The other I don't remember. Joe was taken care of before the sea witch sailed. Do you still have my card? No. No, it was gone when I came to. I see. This friend of Joe's must have taken your place, Nick. I will get a message to the sea witch at once. <laughs> set, Nick? Yeah, I guess so, Griggs. Where's the skipper? Up in the radio shack. There's a radio message coming in. Uh, Lord Byron here can let us down and handle the pump. Sure, Griggs. Okay. You go down first and wait for me. Don't do anything until I get down there. Okay. Screw his faceplate on, Lord Byron. Sure, Griggs. Okay. Lower him. This time we've got the right location. I land right on the sunken ship. It's lying on its side. Griggs comes down after me and drops into a hole in the side of the ship. In a minute he crawls out with a waterproof container. The underwater demolition data we're both after. Then he stiffens and seems to be listening to something. Divers' phones are on separate lines, so I can't hear what Griggs was listening to. But suddenly Lord Byron is singing into my phone. There were once two men in a diving suit, and one of them's in trouble, you can bet your boots. The bad man is holding a knife very tight. The good man had better begin to fight. Great time to be singing. 
Then suddenly it registers. It's more than a song. It's a warning. I turn around just in time to see Griggs bringing his knife through the water toward my diving suit. From then on, it's like a slow motion man movie. I manage to get my hand around his wrist in time, and I start inching him back toward the hole in the side of the ship. We sway back and forth for a few seconds. Then I finally get my shoulder against him and shove. He topples over into the hole. There's slack in his cable. I take a turn around the beam. Then I fish my own knife out of my belt and cut his phone line. Lord Byron. Lord Byron, haul me up. He's a little unconscious right now, Nick. Whatever your name is. Huh? I just got a radio message about you from Jeremiah. Jeremiah? Oh, so he's the big boss. Yeah. It looks like that message came just in time. With you on the bottom and me on the surface. I got news for you, brother. You're not coming up. In a moment, the conclusion of Dangerous Assignment. Now, a brief message from the Ford dealers of America. Owners everywhere are raving about their 1950 Fords. Here is what Mr. Clyde McNeely of Illinois, one of more than 410,000 new Ford owners, has to say about his 50 Ford. Being a metal plater, I naturally am interested in machinery and metals. I've realized for many years that Ford had a real power plant under the hood. Now that I own a 1950 Ford, I'm sold on it, particularly because of the engine and also because I like its style. It surprises me that the 100-horsepower V8 engine is so quiet. In fact, the mechanical features of the 1950 Ford are outstanding. Its power and quietness, the way it rides, the ease of handling, and its economy. Yes, ask any Ford owner how he feels about his big new Ford. And he'll tell you it's tops for performance and for comfort. But prove it for yourself. Drop into your neighborhood Ford dealers and test drive this great car. You'll be amazed when you discover how little it costs to buy, to run, and to maintain. Do it tomorrow. Test drive the big new 1950 Ford. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. But if I'm not coming up, neither is Griggs. What did you do to him? He's out of commission right now. Ah, no wonder he can't talk to me. Well, you won't be talking much longer either, Nick. I'm turning off your air. Now, look. So long, sucker. Wait a minute. If, if you turn off my air, I've still got time to open this container and scatter these papers you're after. You'll never get them. Yeah, you're just bluffing, Nick. According to Griggs, those papers are sealed in there too tight for you to do anything about in diving suit. I'm going to haul Griggs up and leave you there. Yeah? Well, just tell me one thing, Skipper. Yeah, what is it? You weren't on deck when Lord Byron lowered us. How do you know which liner is which? How do you know which one of us you're going to haul up? <laughs> Not good enough, Nick. I know which phone I'm talking to you on, and I can see which line it's connected to. Maybe I had Lord Byron switch the phone lines when he let us down. Not a chance. Like I said before, so long, sucker. I played my last card, and he trumped it. I stand there with a sick feeling in my middle as I watch Griggs' line tighten with a jerk, and suddenly I know there's only one thing more I can do. Well, so you did switch phone lines on me, huh? Thanks for the tip, Nick. I knew if I jerked your line hard enough, I could get a grunt out of you. Now I'm sure which line to haul up. It had worked. Griggs' line slackens, and the skipper starts hauling me up. Halfway to the surface, he turns off the air. That's good. There'll be less air in my suit and I can move my arms better. I let my body go limp and slump my head down below the face plate and the helmet like I'm unconscious. I surface. The skipper holds me up on deck and unscrews the face plate. Okay, Griggs. You'll be all right. You guessed wrong. Nick! Yeah, come on, skipper. Let's bump heads. Oh. Nick, you okay? I tried to warn you. Yeah, that warning came just in time. Thanks, Lord Byron. When I get out of this suit, I'll untie you, and we'll haul up Griggs and head for Trinidad. And Jeremiah. Untie you? Jeremiah? You know, Nick, this almost sounds like a Calypso song. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, then, I might as well finish it. How, how's that thing go? Oh, Jeremiah was a fine man, he, until he sent his bad boys out to sea. 
They got all fouled up down near the equator. Now Steve and Lord Byron bring back the demolition dater. Okay. Uh, Nick, in the future, I had better sing the Calypso. Yeah, maybe you had better. You have just heard another episode in the exciting new adventure series, Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Dunleavy as Steve Mitchell. Dangerous Assignment, written by Bob Reif, with music by Bruce Ashley, is directed by Bill Carn. Be with us next week at this time when Brian Donlevy, starring as Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment. Tomorrow, be sure to hear Bob Hope and Fibber McGee on NBC. Welcome back. Well, a really fun episode. I loved having a Calypso-themed commercial in the bar. That was just great. Uh, I don't know who did the Calypso singing, other than, of course, the last one with Brian Donlevy. Uh, you know, Jester Hairston, the great and talented artist in so many genres, did the Calypso singing and played King Moses on... Bold Venture. I can't tell who's doing it here. I don't think it's him. The voice of King Moses is a bit softer. I do think it says something about Steve as a character that he would try to sing a Calypso song. It kind of uh, goes into his sense of his adventure and his willingness to try new things at least once. I mean, most folks expect that they would probably be bad at singing Calypso songs. Steve Mitchell actually now knows he's bad at singing Calypso songs. Uh, other aspects, I, I like the sound effects. They did some good work when Steve was wearing the helmet, and they timed it, I thought, really well, so... You would hear the effect when Steve had the helmet on, and even when he was narrating, you know, he'd narrate with the helmet on. And then it would change, you know, immediately. So it had a nice sense of realism about it. Of course, we got to see Steve's greatest gift is just his ability to improvise, think on his feet, and to really play head games when his back is up against the wall. And he handled it quite well. There were a couple of odd points. I think the main one uh, surrounded the whole substituting Steve for Nick. There was really no reason for Steve to end up in the drunk tank because Nick was in a private cell. I mean, I think the whole point of that was so that Steve's buddy could get murdered. And getting Steve out of the drunk tank could have led to him losing his birth if the buddy didn't get killed. Also, you have to appreciate how... Uh, they missed the point of giving the guy, uh, uh, Nick, a private cell. Okay, so let me just go ahead and explain this to you. We need to hide this guy away. We don't want him in the drunk tank. Uh, can we put him right by the drunk tank so that if anybody who happens to come by uh, looks for him can find him? Oh, sure, you can go ahead and do that, but don't put him in the drunk tank. Put him in the private cell. But other than those two nitpicks, I thought this was a really good, suspenseful episode with a solid soundtrack. Now, of course, the program was sponsored by Ford. Ford would not become a regular uh, sponsor of the program, although they would sponsor another episode. Dangerous Assignment would have network sponsors on and off for months, most notably Weedy. The 1950 Fords featured a lot of classic designs, and if you have any appreciation for cars from that era, I definitely encourage a Google search, because there's some great uh, uh, car designs to be seen. All right, well, uh, listener comments and feedback now. And Eddie sent a note along with his donation. I've been listening to your show for over seven years now and really enjoy it. Because it's presented uh, very well with great variety and novelty and fun. I'm very nostalgic about early uh, radio. 
It expands my imagination, and I like to rest my eyes from the TV and relax. Your analysis is something I always look forward to uh, from each show. So it's certainly a great learning experience. Thank you. Wishing you continued success. Well, thanks so much, Eddie. And I appreciate your uh, support and your kind note. I love uh, audio drama and love audio programming in general. You know, even the non-dramatic stuff. The internet really hit big when I was in my mid-teens, 15 or 16, and I played with a lot of stuff and experimented with so many different things that were coming out on the internet. I remember the very first audio program that I tried to do. It was me and my brother goofing around, pretty much. And we recorded an audio program. I think we were using, like, the computer recorder. And the website, you know, it took forever to upload because we had dial-up internet. And the website streamed the audio with RealPlayer, you know, because uh, nobody had the bandwidth to download files. So we had these crummy sounding real audio files that took forever to produce. But I thought it would be nice to be able to actually do a radio program online. And then within a decade, podcasting would come and we'd get on that uh, bandwagon. And really, it's incredible to be able to share this. And I'm truly blessed to have been able to make so many episodes and having so many folks out there listening. Thank you so much once again, Eddie. And now let's go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Leslie, Patreon supporter since November 2018, currently supporting us at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Leslie. And that will do it for today. If you're not subscribed to this podcast, you can subscribe using your favorite podcasting app, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn, or the Amazon Music app at amazon.com slash otrdetectives. Also, if you're enjoying this podcast, please rate and review it at any of those places where you download your podcast from. We'll be back next Wednesday with another episode of Dangerous Assignment, but listen tomorrow for Philo Vance, where... Quite a party going on in there, Eddie. Huh? Who are you? My name is Vance, Philo Vance. So, your name's Vance, and so there's quite a party going on in there. So? What's the occasion of the celebration? Oh, kind of a party to announce a... New benefit organization. Yeah, that's what it is. A benefit organization. Whose benefit? Besides your own. Look, Vance, I know all about you. You're supposed to be smart and you're supposed to be tough. Right now I got a phone call to make. You're going to be smart and let me make it or tough and try to stop me? It might be very smart to stop this entire organization right now. Yeah, Eddie, I have an idea the district attorney wants to see you. So let him send me a summons. He did better than that. He sent me. You sure you know what you're doing, Vance? You yourself said I was smart. I take it back. You're an egghead. Now get out of my way. Seems to me I said you and I were going to see the D.A. Seems to me I said get out of my way. Now get... Or uh, what? I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.